<laughs> All right, welcome everybody to my step-by-step -step painting tutorial. I'm Erin of Erin Fun Paints. Uh, today I'll be teaching you how to paint step-by-step -step this lovely Candyland-inspired design. Uh, lots of different elements in here. We've got cotton candy clouds, we've got a cake castle, we've got this what would you call the sugary rainbow trail? I don't know, licorice lollipops, everything under the sun. Uh, and again, I'll teach it to you step by step. So, oop, I gotta change my battery. I was in the middle of doing that and I forgot. So you can see my original on screen and I will keep it on screen just in the smaller version, but mostly you'll actually see me paint along with you. So if my camera could work, three, two, one, let's go. Oh, almost, almost. There we go. You can see there's a live version of the painting too. This is the original that I made and I'm actually going to paint it with you. Um, so you can actually see it done step by step. It won't be just all me explaining verbally. You'll actually be able to see this happen uh, each step of the way. So you can paint along with me. You can use this as inspiration. You're welcome to change it up if you like as well. If you want to change up any colors or um, elements, kind of make it your own. Uh, that's the whole idea. I'm just hoping I can give you a nice little base so you can kind of like get a little more confident with painting and then you can kind of go on your own way with it. Uh, if you see anything through the white here, it's just because I painted over an old canvas, so do not worry about that. If you can guess the painting, feel free. Um, the supplies for today are always the same. I always use the same uh, general colors and paintbrushes to keep it easy for everyone to follow along. So I'll be using five different paint colors. I use red, yellow, phthalo blue, black, and white. And then from those colors, I'll teach you how to mix all the in-between colors. Uh, and then in terms of brushes, I have three different kinds. I have a large flat, I have a medium round, and I have a small round, so pretty much just a small, medium, and large brush. And again, if you have anything slightly different, uh, that's totally fine. I always just recommend having a few different sizes to play with. Uh, Bowen, thank you very much for following. Enjoy your crocheting as well. Uh, yeah, paint colors, brushes, I recommend having some paint water nearby, some paper towel to wipe off your brushes when you're cleaning them, uh, and then hopefully you're wearing something that you don't mind getting paint on or you're wearing a lovely apron. Thank you, Terry, as always. And uh, that's pretty much it for supplies. Again, I keep it very basic so that uh, most people can follow along with these small number of supplies that they might have at home. Uh, if you have any questions throughout, feel free to post them in the live chat. I'm currently live on Twitch uh, doing this step by step. Otherwise, you might be watching me on YouTube. Hello. So feel free to check me out on Twitch. Uh, I try and do these tutorials once a month uh, on Sundays. So feel free to come over and check out my schedule and chat with me and I can tell you when the next one is. Cool. All right, we'll do a cheers and then we'll get started. All right. So we have lots of different fun elements in this painting. I want to first actually put down our nice chocolate pudding. All of these elements can be different things that you think of, but we determine this is chocolate pudding. We have a chocolate pudding base everywhere. So I want to do that first just so we can get a nice uh, chocolate brown color all over. We can kind of map out where our nice little trail is going to be and then we can kind of move up and down our painting as we need to while the paint dries. So I would probably grab your biggest brush, this large flat brush here, or just anything similar, and we can start to mix a lot of brown. Maybe you have a brown paint color already, maybe you don't. I do not, because I just use the three primary colors in black and white, so I'm gonna have to do a fair amount of mixing right now. So let me walk you through it and we can all do it together if you're mixing with me. First off, we'll be mixing red and yellow paint. That's why you see me grabbing my <laughs> big bottles of paint here. Pudding. No long time since I painted. Yes, yes, I know. Well, it's been. A, I'm, I just know because it's been a long time since I've done a tutorial, so I'm happy to be doing this when I want to get back into doing consistent ones, just on a more defined schedule. All right. So the first two colors we mix together are red and yellow, which I know seems a little bizarre, but I do have a method and a process for this. I mix three different colors to make brown. And it is not what they teach in art school. They teach you to mix red, yellow, and blue, all three primary colors. It has never worked out for me, so I made my own combo of colors here. <laughs> made a pudding. <laughs> please, please, please change it. Please change it. Made a pudding. <laughs> please do, Todd. I saw you saying maybe after Christmas, but yeah, whenever you can. I know we're all itching to see them with your beautiful watercolors, your glittery ones, your shiny ones. All right, once you have a bunch of red and yellow mixed up, you can grab some black and put it in there. Again, usually blue is the one that's recommended. I, it never works out when I put blue in there. So I put black and you can see how it's turning into a nice chocolatey brown. 
Yum, yum, yum. And I'm mixing lots of it because we're going to be using lots. We're covering up almost half of the canvas with it. Almost. <laughs> Wood pud. <laughs> oh, no worries. And yeah, whatever you like. You can always paint another time, as you know. Glad you're here either way. You can see some step-by-step -step tutorial. I know you like watching sometimes, even when you're not painting. Oh, what do you mean, Todd? You might not actually swatch them. All right, so first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to just kind of separate the canvas, not quite half-half. I want to leave a little more room on the top. So just below half, I'm actually going to do a horizontal brown line. Our chocolate pudding enters the canvas with one little brown line so far. Just one quick one. And I'm going to sketch out a few things so that we can kind of leave some spots blank for later. It'll make things a little bit easier if we leave some blank spots because brown is a very dark color, so we don't want to cover up everything. We want to leave some room for a nice rainbow trail uh, and not as much our bridge, but we can kind of map it out if we think that would be useful. <laughs> wooding. <laughs> Pudding wooding. <laughs> oh, okay. What were the glittery ones then? Am I wrong by calling those acrylics? All right. So first thing we're doing is we're mapping out that rainbow trail. What did we call it? If chat wants to remind me, feel free. It was based off a of specific candy. Uh, the nice kind of rainbow gummy with uh, all that nice sugar on top. The very crusty looking sugar. I kept calling it crusty sugar last time. <laughs> so my trail is going to start kind of going to the left. I'm starting it just kind of off center a little bit on the right here. It's going to veer over to the left. That's good. Curve over right. That's come come left again. Like that. Just kind of like a little, not an S shape, but kind of, it's kind of a curvy S. Just has a little bit more of an interesting pathway rather than straight straight down you know and you can see it's a little messy I'm mainly just looking at the inside of this trail I don't care about the outside because I'll be painting all around there like this momentarily it's more so just the inside edge that I'm looking at oh they're watercolor oh okay 14 right oh yes of course not but those those sheeny ones those sheeny ones look very very pretty all right, and then I'm doing the other side of the pathway. So what I'm doing is I'm keeping the pathway nice and tight and small at the top. And then as it comes further down the canvas or closer to us, it's going to widen out a little bit. So you can see what I'm trying to do is I'm angling it so it's widening the pathway slowly. Um, if you don't like this brush, by the way, for this step, you can, of course, change. I'm actually mentioning that because I'm finding it a wee bit troublesome personally. I'm managing with it, but it probably wasn't the easiest choice here just because they're very long, long bristles here. Okay, I don't know if I want it that wide, so I'm just gonna close it in a little bit. Good to go too wide to begin with, and then we can just close it in if we don't feel like we need it that wide. And that's good, then we'll do our bridge right here. So I'm not going to mark out the bridge just because it's mostly black, uh, and then we'll actually use white before we do the red. The red is to signify licorice. I was trying to do some like licorice railings and stuff. So now that we have the pathway, we can just fill in the rest with brown. Anything else you see on top of the brown pudding, we're going to kind of layer on. So those nice lollipops, the nice gumdrop trees, we're going to use white to kind of layer those on once the brown pudding has dried. But I thought the pathway was a nice easy thing to at least uh, plan out and carve out for us. So lots of brown everywhere now. Oh, sorry, hold on. Apparently, Gertie, it's still, um, I still have auto mod kind of on because it is useful at points, but sometimes it, yeah, it's upset about words that are, yeah, coward. I don't know. I think it just kind of goes hard on any word that could be considered like a bullying word, you know, but we understand that this is playful. <laughs> it's just, uh, yeah, light. It's not, sorry, I was going to say light bullying. Excuse me. <laughs> it's just light bullying. It's fine. No, no, it's playful. Playful banter. I don't know what to say anymore. Anyway. <laughs> nah, Todd knows he was kidding. Or you were kidding, rather, Gurney. Uh, Lynn, I'll see you later. You'll go. I'll go relax. Please go relax. Good, good, good. It's good to see you, Lynn. Hopefully you enjoy the Candyland design another time. Yeah, so, Gurney, it's just part of, like, any of the automatically banned words that I think could be, like, you know, rude in the, in the right context, you know? But we're fine. <laughs> Still gonna swatch it, might not prop. I see what you're saying. 
Oh, absolutely, Lynn. Yeah, Merry Christmas. Happy holidays to you. I do think this will actually be my last stream before holidays, depending. I don't know. I don't want to make promises. Um, I thought, I guess on that note, I thought I was going to stream tomorrow and then I'm not. I'm not going to stream tomorrow. <laughs> I was saying last week that I think I would have time to do it, and it turns out I don't because of um, <laughs> errors I made. So uh, don't count on me being live tomorrow. <laughs> Let's just say no to that one. And if you see me on like this week or next week, it'll be by lovely surprise, okay? I think that's fair. Um, with this pathway, by the way, you can actually cut it off before the very bottom here because our bridge will be uh, popping up, I guess, before we hit the bottom of the canvas. So feel free to chop it off right there. Uh, yes. Anyway, sorry about that, guys. I thought I was going to, and I, I messed up some dates, essentially. So, oopsie daisy. <clears throat> yeah, Charlene, I did have a lot of private events, too. Uh, the last two weeks, I had five or six of them, which was really, really great for me. Um, somehow I was able to manage doing all those while also doing the stream schedule, which is a great sign, by the way, because I'm never usually that busy with private events. It is simply because it was the holiday season and I was hired to do a lot of, like, corporate shindigs online. So that was really good for me and a lot of fun. Uh, yeah, so I feel like I was feeling it by the very end. I was like, oh, I feel like I have something to do every single day at this point, but, um, it was manageable. And again, I think it's a good sign for the schedule because it meant I was able to keep up with that for the most part, other than Friday, I guess I did have to stay offline Friday because I was quite literally doing a private event during the time I should have been on. <clears throat> Excuse me, but I'll keep saying good sign, good sign. <laughs> Excuse me, I'm so hiccupy, my gosh. <clears throat> oh, congrats, Laura. Laura says get her booster tomorrow. I open up availability for tomorrow. Ontario did some switching around with who's eligible. I got tomorrow, we'll see. I have to make two swatches. I just want to see all of them. One round. Oh, I see for the different uh, different brushes. Hey, Tiggy, welcome in. I assume her booster shot, Lynn. I would assume. The COVID booster, because uh, Ontario and Canada in general changed a bunch of rules for when we're eligible. Oh no, Lori, I'm so sorry to hear. Is she okay or is it just kind of precaution? Hey, I'm welcome and hello. Oh, that's a cute little emote. Hello, how's it going? Am I gonna be use up the vast amount of brown I created by lighting them up with white? Um, Kind of, we can use the brown, I guess, kind of for the cake. Cause we make like a beige and I feel like if you add enough white and yellow I feel like that could work. I should hurry up with my brown. I'm really taking my time on the pudding here. Hey, Ash, welcome in as well. We're in the middle of, uh, not in the middle, we're kind of at the start of our lovely Candyland painting. How's your evening going? Mm-hmm. And Radio, good to see you as well. Again, we're just, uh, just starting our toot, our step-by-step -step painting tutorial. We're doing our Candyland design that I created a few weeks back on stream. We're just doing it in a hopefully two hour period. Step by step for everybody. We're starting with our chocolate pudding. I'll let you guys know, I'm again using a canvas that I painted over in white just cause I didn't have any fresh canvases on me and I have all these other, you know, canvases that I've maybe painted a design on that I don't need to keep. It's harder to, <laughs> harder to apply paint. It's like sticky. I feel it. It's like I'm actually painting with pudding. Ooh. Like, I feel like I really need to add a lot of water for it to spread. Ooh. Ooh, gross. But yeah, otherwise going well, Radio. Thank you. Oh, that's real good, Lori. Yeah. Lucky you. And you got it for tomorrow? That's crazy. Because I had a friend in a region that opened up early and she got, I think, February. So, ooh. Hey, Mom. High risk, most I see. Yeah, that's probably just better for safety then. Still waiting. 
Oh, wow, that's crazy. Even if she gets results back negative, I assume, Lori? I don't know all the protocols for that, for like exposure and all of that. Yeah, yeah, you can check, Lynn. I think, um, well, I know the government has opened up for three, but yeah, I'm not sure what was recommended. Either way, I'm getting mine as soon as possible if I can. <laughs> mm-hmm. Uh, maybe, Lori. I honestly don't know the difference between gesso and like white paint. I think gesso, if anything, is a little thinner. I don't know if it dries differently, but I've heard people uh, who cover their canvases do a combination of gesso and then like sanding it down. And I've never done that before. And maybe that would stop this issue. I'm really not sure. I just always viewed it as like unnecessary. <laughs> <clears throat> Going to shoppers. Okay. I think I might look in to see if there's any walk-ins or anything, because I know there's always that, too. They talk about all the time how walk-ins are, like, way quicker nowadays if you get on certain lists. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they upped it because of the new variant. I gotcha. There's just been a lot of announcements in the past few days. It's been quite a lot for me. A lot of changes. <sighs> Complications, but it'll all be okay. That pharma save. Hmm. Yeah, I'll just, I'll start to just put myself on lists. Tomorrow I need to see if I can just get on the Ontario website, but otherwise I'll just get on all the lists. Yeah. Really, Lord? Oh, that's sick. Okay. And that was through um, the Ontario website or something else? Because I think the Ontario website right now will say, like, I'm not allowed. They'll be like, we know that you're not of age. <laughs> They're always quick on that. Sometimes regionally they open them up early. That's why I'm wondering. Maybe your region opened up early. Or you got on like a yeah pharmacy waitlist. Curious. Be the third, <laughs> thirded, <laughs> the third. Yeah, you and Lori both. Then you can both uh, <laughs> talk about it tomorrow in Discord. See how you're doing. All right, everybody. I'm going to go ahead and uh, start my sky. So the sky. What did I do here? I'm trying to think of if I created a spot for my cake or not. I think we just put the cake right on top. All right, we're gonna do our sky. And we're just gonna cover the whole thing in a beautiful cotton candy cloud layer. So I'm gonna start prepping my plate here. And then what we'll do is anything on top of the sky, like our cake, uh, cake castle, we're just going to like use some white to kind of sketch it out, get a little base down and then we'll add on top. That's usually what I do with a lot of these, uh, these steps. All right, so we're going to start with some pink and then we'll start to put some blue around it. So the sky here, again, lots of clouds. You can see very kind of billowy and fluffy and everything. Uh, and what I did is I just took a lot of kind of pinks and whites and blues and kind of just fluffed them all together. So lots of circular motions with my brush, lots of tapping and just kind of slowly adding color and allowing it to all mix together. So to start with, I am going to start with pink just so I can keep it a little more contained and then we'll, after adding the pink, add all the nice blues and stuff. So I'm taking my medium round brush now that I've washed it off and I'm mixing red into some white. Oh, through shoppers. Thank you, Lori. Okay. Gotcha. All right. I'm going to look into that then. So I'm starting with what I would call like a medium pink. It's not super light, it's not super dark, just kind of in the middle. And I'm going to start by doing some just kind of like round brush strokes. They're all very small little round brush strokes. And I'm kind of moving my brush around as I do it. So I'm kind of going up, 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 down, 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 up, 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 higher, down, 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 up, up, and then back down. And just creating very rough cloud shapes. So when I think of a cloud, I kind of think of this Kind of again very rounded top here it kind of goes round and higher 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 as it gets to the middle ish and then it comes kind of down by doing more little rounded strokes down so it's very very poofy on the top and then i kind of usually imagine clouds being a little more flat on the bottom so you can see i'm not like brushing it flat but it's generally a little more horizontal down there so that's my nice pink cloud i'm just going to add a bunch of those around i'm just going to do a bunch of these nice and big wherever i want just circling my brush. You can see nice and messy. We'll kind of clean them up and add some more dimension, some highlights. 
a little bit later. For now, I just want to start to do lots of nice pinks in the sky. We used to make a lot of chocolate pudding color. Must have thought I was going to eat it. I mean, so much. Especially brown Cindy. I find that, like, everybody makes too little. And then they're always furious because they're like, I can't remake it. I don't know what's wrong. <laughs> so I've learned from that. And I'm always like, make a lot. I'm always like, make way more than you think. But I guess you, uh, you made way, 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 way more. Which is okay. Again, we can always use it for later. I'm confident we can turn it into more of a beige for the, uh, the cake castle. So yeah, just loading on the paint. I really like lots of paint for this so my brush can really travel across the canvas nicely. If there's not a lot of paint, it's gonna kind of like scrape off and I don't want that. I want it nice and floofy. Yeah, so the sky starts off kind of messy, look very blobby to begin with, and then we'll kind of clean it all up as we go. Oh, nice. Were you saying in Discord you wanted to do another diamond painting? That was somebody. I forget if it was you, Tiki. But someone else was itching to do a diamond painting as well, if it wasn't you. I still haven't done one of those. I know they're quite popular. Let's add a little down here. I'll add just a wee bit more, maybe one more, like right here. So you can see I'm kind of stacking them on top of one another. I'm not worried about overlapping right now. We can work on like foreground and background clouds a little bit later. All right, so I'm gonna play with these pink clouds a little bit more. You can see they're obviously quite different than in my original right now. They're kind of just the bases right now. So what I want to do is I want to add a little bit of both of uh, darker pink and also some lighter pink and or white. You can kind of see what I did is I stuck the white closer to the tops of the clouds. I'm using my mouse to show you on the original here, if you can see. Yeah, the white stick a little bit closer to the top of the clouds and or kind of in the middles to create a little more dimension as if there's another layer of cloud kind of in front or on top. And then the darker pink otherwise sticks closer to the bottom just as another little punch of color rather than sticking to this kind of medium pink we can get some glints of uh, hot pink in there so maybe let's start with the hot pink and then we can concentrate on just the white the white can kind of stack on top as a nice little final before we start to move into the blues all right so for a hot pink i'm just using more red and mixing into either my existing pink or some white and that'll create a nice hot pink right there and I'm just going to swirl that kind of in the bottoms of the clouds, allowing the pink to mix a little bit with the other pink so it's not just resting right on top. It can blend a little into the other pink that we have there. So creating a little bit, almost like a darker core or a darker bottom, like a nice shadow to the cloud. YouTube video, I don't know if I followed a Bob Ross tour, not with paint, but with frosting? No, I did not. I recognize that name but I'm not familiar. Is she like a bakery extraordinaire? I would love to see that with icing because I did that kind of, I didn't follow a tutorial with icing, but at one point I decorated a Bob Ross themed cake. That was last year for Bob Ross's birthday. And I tried to use like anything edible and icing to create some like happy little trees and different Bob Ross things. So not the exact same, but similar. I'd love to see her take on it. Is that the, um, oh, what's her name? Was she, um, she was she part of a bigger YouTube channel at one point? No, I think I'm thinking of someone else. Anyway, whatever, I can look it up later. So again, I'm just being very messy with it. You can see still doing these little circular motions with my brush and or even just like tapping a little bit all creates a nice fluffy kind of cotton candy cloud texture. Did you do that when you did the noodle cake? I know you're thinking about it. I don't know if you did. No, that was like last October. It was just like a simple cake that I had uh, put fondant on beforehand. And then I <laughs> made a 
very rickety stand for it and uh, tried to like twist it around and do... It was kind of like using just from what I remember, I used food coloring and water and kind of did watercolor stuff on it. And I'm just laughing because the, the rickety thing that the cake was balanced on was like falling apart and I almost dropped the cake at one point, so it was a whole ordeal. Yeah, I did doodo, you're right. It was a uh, noodle cake and then I did like a quick doodo after. I'm just fluffing up my clouds a bit more. I want them bigger. I loved that dude, okay? He was so cute. I think I nailed the dude, cake. by the way. I was very, very impressed with what I did. And the noodle, but like... Dudo just looked like the canvas on the cake. I was very happy about it. <laughs> So I'm actually going to do the blue now. I'm going to do the blue all around the cotton candy and then that way we can really have a nice clean kind of like surface for our white. I'm worried about putting the white now and then the blue mixing in. So I think instead we should start to do the blue background and then we'll put the white on top. As far as I know, I think I'm thinking of someone else. It's fine. I recognize that name though as well. All right, so for the blue background and I chose blue and pink cause I thought those were very like cotton candy colors. I'm just mixing my phthalo blue into some white to create more of a sky blue. And I'm not even worried about mixing it fully. It's kind of nice to have it a little more marbled because that way when I put it on, you'll see kind of different variations of blue as I swirl it in here. So I'm just swirling anywhere where there's blank spots, getting nice and tight to my clouds, trying not to leave too many gaps, but there might be a little gap or two and that's fine, but I'm keeping with the swirly motion even though we're not doing clouds, just to kind of keep with the fluffiness of the whole thing. Again, the idea is kind of like cotton candy. So yeah, very round, fluffy, light. So even though this isn't quite clouds, it's not like blue clouds, I'm still circling around just to keep with the fluffy effect. It was pretty good, thank you. <laughs> I was very proud. Uh, sure, Tiggy. If you want to throw it in uh, Discord, that would be appreciated. Yeah, that would be great for um, the live stream chat. If you see the category called her channel called live stream chat, that's essentially a little place to go if we're talking about links that we can't uh, post in chat. Just because I don't do link posting. <laughs> and then we all go to the Discord and check it out. So yeah, you don't have to do the circular motions everywhere if you don't want to. You could do some horizontal back forth, but trying my best to keep it kind of floofy and nice and tight to the pink. And again, if you want to vary your blue tones, that's totally fine. Like if you want to play around with uh, adding a little more blue to make it a little darker or a little more white to make it lighter. Oh, not brown though, that's not good. <clears throat> Whoops, if you want to play around with brown, no. If you ever make a mistake like I do, just wipe it away. Just get rid of it. If there's any brown in there, just get rid of it. It won't blend away. It'll be very hard to blend away, so you might as well just wipe it off. Messy palette today. All around the clouds. And again, like grab some whites if you want, kind of swirl them in if you want to. Adding a little more variety to your color, having fun with it. And it just, yeah, it just helps with uh, the texture too, having all these different versions of blue. You can see the little swirlies a little bit better. She had two, sick. Someone posted at one point Bob Ross on a van, like someone like painted a whole moving vehicle, a van, uh, with a Bob Ross. I don't know if it was like one painting or inspired by all of his paintings or something, but that was pretty cool too. That was a lot of work. Lots of filling in, lots of blue. I'm gonna need to 
reload my blue in a little bit. Mine is mixing with a few different colors that I don't want it to. Blech. Yeah, people get very creative with the Bob Ross toots these days. I just like creating them in acrylics, but people try and recreate those everywhere. See, my blue's turning a little more teal, and that is unintentional. The yellow is seeping into my blue, but it's it's kind of cute. It's kind of a nice cotton candy color, a little yellow in there. Just in case anyone's wondering, it is unintentional. But it's happening, it's fine. Cute. I'm just adding a little more white here and there just to kind of cover up some spots that I see. But overall, I'm liking the texture. Again, very fluffy looking. No joke, I'm mixing and wondering why my blue looks so gray. Duh, I gotta pick up some besides black and white. <laughs> oh dear! <laughs> what happened? <laughs> well, are you using blue? <laughs> no. <laughs> the blue and black can get you, that's fair, that's fair. Oh, that's funny. Cindy, I'm so happy you're painting along, by the way. <laughs> I hope you know it wasn't mandatory. I hope no one took that super seriously. It was just a playful little little thing. Just a playful little ban threat, you know. Threat of ban. Like Hokey, for example, was like, I just wanna let you know I won't be there. <laughs> Last stream she was like, just just letting you know. <laughs> no, what's up with them, Charlene? Are you doing your little circular motions? Just fluffing them around. We still have some work to do with them too, so. <laughs> That's fair, Cindy. <laughs> as long as you're having fun with it, I hope, I hope. Uh, let me grab a little white. I'm just gonna do one last thing for our sky and clouds, and then maybe I'll wait a couple minutes just to make sure we're all on the same page here before moving on. I'm just grabbing white at this point after I wash off my brush and I just like to use the white again on the tops of the pink clouds a little bit so I'm kind of swirling them on. You can tap them on if that's better for you. And again trying to kind of blend them into the pink just so it's not like a solid white on top. You could do some individual strokes. I kind of like that sometimes keeping a couple you know that are a little more on their own but for the most part I think it's nice to kind of blend it into the pink. So it all kind of blends down, or again, you can use the white a little more in the center as if there's a little bit of like an overlap with another cloud coming in, you know? So again, just taking my white, kind of swirling it along the tops. Helps with covering up any remaining gaps too, if you do that, because there might be some gaps in between your blues and pinks. You can kind of cover those up with your nice white color here. And again, it allows you to kind of show which clouds are in front of one another. So if you have a few that are stacked up in front of each other, you can kind of use the white to highlight the top of the foreground clouds. So for example, this one's in the background. I did the top of that, but now I'm doing the top of this one because he's in front. And now we could see a little bit easier which one's behind, which one's in front. Oh, thank you, Tiggy. I will check that out. Again, I'm curious what someone else did with the whole Bob Ross cake idea. I was sure it hadn't been done before, but I hadn't looked up any references before I did mine. I was truly just doing like elements. I wasn't really following one of his tutorials, but following a whole tutorial could be fun for sure. I wonder if I should do more twists on the Bob Ross paintings, because I do want to keep doing those like here and there where we kind of do one step by step with him. I want to keep it fresh though. Storm clouds, because they're gray. <laughs> you need that blue in there. You can always let it dry if you want, Cindy, and then uh, go in a little later. Kind of cover up with any blues you want. Cream puffs, mmm. I've done that before, Elvin. They're fine that way. You don't need them to thaw. 
Okay, so at this point I'm not teaching any new steps. I'm just maybe like playing around with my clouds a little bit so you all can too. If you need to fix anything up. Personally, I'm just gonna make some clouds a little bigger. I feel like in my original I have more pink than I do blue. So I'm just trying to match that a little bit better for everybody. But in the end, every painting is gonna be a wee bit different, even mine. So it just kind of showcases how there's always gonna be slight differences here and there, but I'm doing my best to kind of bring back some of this pink here. Uh, caution, if you are doing that like me, you'll notice that it mixes a little bit with the blue, which is fine. It kind of creates a nice purple tone. It's not as evident in the original because I did a more careful job of letting things dry before playing, but yeah, just know if you kind of play with your pink and blue a little bit and mix it together, it'll just create a nice purple. Nothing wrong with that. Purple, I guess, is kind of cotton candy as well. But yeah, just for the sake of being a little closer to the original, that's, that's why I'm doing this. Otherwise, keep creating your own way. Oh, it's a full-on painting. I see. I thought you, sorry, I thought you were saying she painted the full painting on a cake. Maybe like a sheet cake? Blue and pink mix, and now it's purple gray. Yeah, that's what's happening to me too. It's mixing a little bit here. But yeah, purple I don't mind. I know it's not in the original. The gray is not preferable for cotton candy, but even if it's like a lighter gray, that should be all right. Again, we can always wait for things to dry and go back over if we need. Keep in mind as well, we will be putting a nice cake castle on here too, so it'll kind of cover up anything that's around here. So I wouldn't worry too much about what's going on right in here. This is all just kind of practice area. And we'll only see kind of the edges of those clouds anyway. Tapping, doing some little swirlies. A little more, I'm just gonna soften up the bottoms here. Are you doing a little swirly motion, Charlie? What are you, uh, what are you up to with your clouds? No cake at all, but she's a baker. Maybe that's what I misinterpreted. Maybe you said she's a baker and she just did painting. Okay. I kept picturing this whole time, Tiggy, that she did a whole painting on a cake. I don't know why I made that assumption. Anywho. But yeah, I'd love to do a Bob Ross painting with like a different twist on it, like either not looking or like fingers only, something like that. Cause it is fun to paint it with acrylics. Like that's enough of a challenge, but just to kind of create another element to it. I think that might be, might be fun. Just thinking out loud for the next, next community challenge or maybe not next, just eventual, you know? Oh yeah, it's getting quite purple. I gotta get some more white in there and dim it down again. Okay, I'll spend another like minute on these clouds and we can move back down the painting again a little bit. Can let these sit for a little while here. Yeah, my purple really ended up mixing, but I don't mind it. It's a uh, Slightly different vibe just on the bottoms of the clouds as a result, but otherwise it's a fun little look. Okay, I'm gonna leave those clouds be for now. We will be putting the, uh, as I keep saying, this nice like cake castle on top. We can use a white layer if we need to or just go right in with beige if this is dry enough, but We'll uh, determine that in a couple minutes here. For now though, I think I'm gonna go back down here. We have our chocolate pudding on here and it might not be completely dry, but it should be dry enough on the edges that we can start kind of playing with the inside of our pathway and just kind of throwing in some colors in there. 
So what I did when I painted this original is I just went, you know, a couple colors at a time. I did not do all the colors at the same time or else they're definitely going to mix together. Hey, Melanie, thank you for following. Just doing a step-by-step -step tutorial here. Feel free to ask any questions you want or just watch along. Thanks for following, though. Uh, so yeah, I'll do a couple colors at a time. That way we can put on a couple ribbons of color, let them dry, and then we'll put on more ribbons of color. So I think when I did this, I started with the outside colors. I maybe did the middle color green, and then I let those really, really dry. And then I go in with my yellow and orange, which are kind of on either side of the middle. Uh, and then that way we can add them in a little cleaner once everything is dry, as I keep saying. All right, so let's uh, start with the left color here. The left hand color is red. And I did follow the exact color order that I saw in those, um, again, I'm the name is escaping me, but those nice kind of rainbow bands of, um, of like gummy, gummy candy. Specific name, but I don't know what it is. I'm using my medium round brush. And again, I'm starting with red paint on the left. So I'm trying to create a very thin line of red paint, just hugging the left hand side. And as I get further down this trail, I am making the red paint a little wider and a little thicker because we have a little more room to play with, right? So starting nice and thin at the start and then adding a little more pressure to my brush. The pressure is going to kind of widen out the bristles a bit. Then I can just kind of continue continue along the trail without much thought. I can just use more pressure and just hug the left hand side and bring the red all the way down. So because we're waiting for colors to dry, they will overlap each other decently. So if you start with a little bit too wide of an edge, I'm just saying that because I think my red might be a little wide compared to all the rest of the space we have here. Uh, you can always overlap colors to help uh, give them more space. So again, we're only working with the two outside and very middle color. And then once those dry, we can go in between those all and we can kind of like create our own space with those new colors if we need to. Yeah, I think the red got a little thick all in here. I think here is fine. It's just in here. It might be a little tight. All right, so we have red. I'm going to make uh, what I would call like a medium blue. So nothing too dark or too light, just kind of in the middle. So I'm mixing blue with a little bit of white on the side of my plate here. So you can see a little darker than our sky, for example. Putting that on the very right hand side. Again, starting thin, adding pressure as I move along and that thickens the band. See, it's gonna be very tight in there. You can see I left almost no room. <laughs> But what we're going to do is we'll do our middle color right in there. And then once all of those dry, we can go in with our in-between colors and just kind of plop them on top. They can make their own room. They will fit in. There's room for everybody. All right, a nice blue. And then finally, I'm going in the middle with a green. So green is made by mixing yellow and blue. Just a nice, vibrant, bright green. I'm going to try my best to stick that in the middle. So I am trying to leave little gaps for the other two colors, but just pointing out if you happen to get a little messy, if things get a little thick in there, that's OK. So yeah, right in there, it's going to be very tight and then it kind of comes back to normal. So. I'll fix that all up later with our other colors. We can just overlap the red, overlap the blue with our uh, yellow and orange. I guess those are the two colors that will come up later. It's like a little racetrack almost. All right, so that's the start of our little rainbow pathway. Again, we have the two other colors to add, but we're not going to add them now. We're going to wait until all of these are dry so there's no like bad mixing going on. Then we can start to like put on some nice sugar in the middle. Hey, Wolf, welcome in. Just doing a step-by-step -step painting tutorial. You can see the uh, design just below me here. 
I created this a week or two ago and I'm just reteaching it step by step for anyone who wants to paint along. So welcome in. If you have any questions, just uh, just let me know. Hey Sandy, all oh, Merry Christmas to Travis as well. I hope you're all having a good holiday so far. If you've started the holidays. Merry Christmas to him too. Ah, oh, no worries, Wolf. <laughs> all good. I don't know if maybe you came with bubbles as a raid a while ago. Uh, but welcome in either way. <laughs> I ended up in the wrong place, oh no. Well, if you must go, that's all right. <laughs> nice to see you stopping in. Both looking forward to... To... <laughs> New Year, maybe? I'm not sure. There was an M there. We'll see what you say. Hey, welcome in, welcome in. It's Mudingo, right? I don't know if I'm saying your name right. <laughs> Moo, yes. I recognize your name. I know you're all over in uh, Miko's stream and all that whenever I'm in there. Awesome, perfect. I've never had to say the name out loud. I know you've been in here before, but I've never been like, Moo. <laughs> so welcome in. <laughs> How's your evening going? Oh, that's okay. Our two week break, very nice. Oh, okay. Taking them art classes so I can start making my own emotes and seeing how some artists draw on pads. I can probably take some with me when I do. Gotcha. Yeah. So like digital art. I see. That's fair. I'm more traditional art. I do a lot of painting. I do make my own emotes, but I don't usually do uh, streams where I talk about it. I just use Procreate on my iPad and that's it. Hope you uh, find some good info though. There's lots of lovely digital artists on Twitch. And I'm good, thanks. Do you mind if I just call you Moo? <laughs> moo, boo, moo, moo. I'm good, thanks. Yeah, happy to be doing a step-by-step uh, -step toot. I haven't done this in a while. Looking forward to holidays and all that good stuff. Yeah. Moo, 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 moo. It's a cute name. I prefer it. Excellent, excellent. That always works out so lovely. I prefer it, you prefer it, we're all good. Okay, I'll leave another minute or two just in case anyone's catching out because I feel like some people were playing around with their clouds a little bit still. Uh, and we want this pathway to dry anyway, so I think next we'll actually go up here and start to work on our um, cake castle. Wow. And I'm pretty sure we can just go on top with our beige as long as this is dry. So maybe I'll leave a couple extra minutes just to dry it. I was wondering if we would need a white layer, but I'm pretty confident we can go on top with our beige. So again, for those painting, you still have a couple more minutes before I move on here. Oh, that's good, Wolf. Yeah, that's uh, honestly what I focus a little more on. No shade to digital art. It's just nothing I've really ever gotten into. But yeah, the uh, the cute little bun emotes that you see, I made those just all on um, Procreate and this one and this one too. All of those guys. Hey, thanks for the follow too. I appreciate it. I'm glad you like traditional art too. Yeah, I don't know. Um, I found Procreate, if you're looking for advice, I, I found Procreate very straightforward and easy to use. Um, yeah, easy to create some very basic, like clean shapes like you see here. You can see my emotes are nothing like super detailed. I just wanted some, you know, clean lines, consistency, and I could kind of use the same base for each bun emote and just add different faces, you know? So there you go. Yeah, good stuff. Yeah, good wolf. Me too. I like all forms. I just gravitate personally more towards uh, traditional because I do traditional art, but I tune into some uh, some digital artists here and there. Yes, the rock, Charlene, I know. You always talk about rocks for sure. Just checking my canvas. So acrylic paint for those new uh, dries pretty fast. Sometimes we just need to give it a couple extra minutes, especially for clouds that we were kind of putting a lot of paint on. We want to give it maybe a couple extra minutes before we go in with a new uh, new layer. Uh, sometimes with paintings, you can like the pathway, kind of plan out what you're going to do and uh, leave some blank spaces. But for the most part with acrylics, I just let it dry and then go on top with new layers. So it works out fine. Oh, gotcha. Okay. Yeah. Drawing's probably a good start for sure. Just to kind of get shapes down and comfort with holding a, uh, you know, pencil or device like that. I got it. What kind of uh, what kind of emotes are you trying to make? Like, do you have a specific character or design thought so far? Or are you still still figuring that out? Let's 
still a tiny bit wet. Let's leave it another minute or two. We have so much more to do. I guess the chocolate pudding is even more dry than the uh, than the sky. Something I know, Aaron is a great teacher. I have mediocre supplies and I am poopy painter. <laughs> as long as you're having fun, <laughs> peepo poo poo. <laughs> I came across that painting like yesterday. I was uh, looking for a painting uh, for a step-by-step -step tutorial I was doing. I was looking for the original and I pulled out peepo poo poo. <laughs> and I was like, why is he not hanging up, honestly? Why is he like stored away? He needs to be properly displayed. That boy is great. His little flower wallpaper. <laughs> Got it, yeah, probably make a, a wait emote, mm-hmm. Yeah, I need to think, of, I'm just curious because I need to think of new emotes soon. I have some more slots to fill up now. I know that Twitch gave us like nine slots, I think, as affiliates. I wanna fill those up for everybody. All right, I'm gonna start to move on to uh, the cake castle here. So just to kind of talk about it a little first. Uh, the idea is it's kind of like a nice big layered cake, right? We have these kind of round, <clears throat> excuse me, at least I tried to make them round, uh, round layers. So I have three of those. Uh, we'll eventually put some icing on it and everything, but for now we're just looking at kind of the beige tone, kind of a nice uh, vanilla cake tone, I guess, in there. I'll uh, work on that. We can also do our little candy cane pillars as well. So I did two little pillars on either side candy cane style so we can start with white paint and just kind of fill those in and then we can use some red to stripe it on as well. Uh, I also tried to attempt some little whipped cream or just whipped topping <laughs> tops to the uh, pillars just to point those out and we can add those in as well. For now though um, I'm going back to the start of my little uh, spiel there and I'm uh, mixing some beige. I'm gonna call it beige you can call it whatever else you want it can be a light brown something like that Speaking of which, I know there's a question about using the brown. I'm going to grab some brown and stick it in here. And you can see it's already turning into a nice beige. So I just grabbed any brown I had remaining. I stuck it into a pile of white and I guess there was a little yellow in there. You can see it's already making a pretty nice beige color. So Cindy and anyone else who has tons of brown left, do not fret. You can see that you can use it for a nice beige. It might just take a little more... Um, just a little extra work, I guess, to make it a little more beige, like maybe grabbing a tiny bit more red to warm it up, but you can see it's very, very close already. So good stuff. Uh, for the store, uh, you can see all the payment methods on the store, but essentially like any major credit card, there's PayPal, there's Shopify pay. There's a lot of different options there. I think you'll be able to find one. Debit, I'm sure, is something. I don't think it's e-transfer, but debit, I believe, is there. Have a look, Charlene, and if you have trouble, you can let me know. Hey, our choppy, welcome in. Thank you. Uh, I hope you're well, too. We're just doing a little step-by-step -step toot right now. A little tutorial for the uh, Candyland painting we did a week or two ago. Yeah, on a Sunday, so we're trying out something uh, different for, for toot days. Trying a Sunday this time, so welcome in. So yeah, again, beige, beige in total, I guess, if you didn't have brown, I should say, is made by mixing lots of white and then just small amounts of yellow and red. It's kind of like you're making a sandy color, right? So lots of white, a little bit of red, a little bit of yellow. So you can see that'll cover up. So as long as you're using a good chunk of paint, you can see it covers right on top of your clouds. So that's great. Uh, I just want to demonstrate there, but mostly I'm going to use this to, first of all, kind of sketch out our cake and then fill it in. So I guess I determined it has to go all the way over here. <laughs> nice big wide base. I'm trying to center it to where the um, where the trail kind of ends off on the horizon line because if you see in the original, the trail kind of goes into uh, a little like entrance way into the cake that I made. So I'm trying to kind of center it. I'll need to shift it a bit to the left it looks like. Widen it that way. And just slowly shaping it. So what I'm doing is I'm doing, you can see a nice horizontal base. I'm doing a little bit of a curve on the sides. These curves might be covered up, at least the first layer of curves might be covered up by the candy cane um, pillars, which is good practice to kind of 
the, the shape we're looking for. And then the top is going to be a little bit of a curve downwards because you're kind of prepping for the next layer. So the next layer is going to kind of curve in front because they're all round layers. So if you want to just kind of carve out where that's going to happen, you can do that now. Even though we're going to kind of connect all these layers anyway and it's going to look like one big mass before we put all the nice shading on top. Again, it's good just to kind of visualize and say, all right, that's going to be our first layer and then we can make the next one and curve with it, you know. It'll work out. And I'll show you how to add those uh, shadows in a minute or two. We're just going to put the nice beige base on. Need a better word than beige. I feel like I wouldn't want to call my cake beige. Hey, I have a beige looking cake, you know? Need a better word, better color word. So next layer is going to be slightly smaller, right? So I'm just kind of making sure the edges are a little bit more pinched in. It's kind of like resting a little into the middle of the cake. Doing another curve down. The sand cake, is that better though? <laughs> Make a sand color for your edible cake. It's accurate, Art Chappy, for sure. It is very much a sand color. I just want a good, like, cake color, you know? Like a batter. This is pancake batter. Good, good. Raw batter color. I was kind of thinking like vanilla batter, but it's even a little more golden than that, I guess. Alright, so that's my second layer. So I did the same thing, kind of the curved edges, the curved top here. And again, you can't really see it, but it'll become more evident once we add the icing so you can see all the different layers stacked on top of one another. You thought they were donuts? They could be! I was thinking like a layer cake, but donuts work just as well. That's fine with me. If you want to imagine them as donuts, that's perfectly fine. Okay, and then the last layer again, smaller. Whether it be a donut or a cake, both work. Doing some curves. And then the top of this is going to be you're curving down and you're curving up. You're kind of creating a little bit of an oval on top because the top will be a little bit exposed and then we'll cover it with some icing and you can see eventually a nice ice cream cone just right on top of everything. All right, so once you have that, you can fill it all in, see how it's looking. I think mine's a tiny bit lopsided at the top, so I can just adjust that in a minute. For now, I'm just filling it in. Tinted titanium, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Tinted white, <laughs> off-white, if you will. <laughs> yeah, mine's tilted this way a bit. I need to just raise this side up a little bit. That's a little better. Something's still a little off. It's this side now. Cool, a nice big mass. There we are. <laughs> so I'll leave that for a minute or two and then we're going to add some nice shading to it. We can add our little doorway things like that. We'll just be using kind of a darker beige or even if you have a little more brown you can again mix that into your beige. Create more of like a toasty looking color. A little more golden. That'll be nice. Good words. Tinted titanium. You know what I mean though? I just wouldn't call a cake beige. <laughs> just doesn't seem appetizing. Doesn't seem appealing. Beige. What else have we got going on? We can do the little shading. We'll get some candy cane pillars next, maybe. Yeah, it'll be kind of going back and forth. That's what I usually do in paints. We kind of work on a couple elements. So we wait for one to dry. We can move down again. Maybe we can finish off the pathway next. We got lots to do around elsewhere, though. Hey, Nessa. Yo, welcome in. We're teaching the uh, the Candyland design finally. <laughs> I only made it a few weeks ago, but 
if you've seen people yelling Candyland before. That's why I'm doing this. I'm kind of giving into the whole meme. How was your weekend? It's weird that I'm doing this on a Sunday, too. I keep wanting to say happy Friday, and it's not Friday. Are you uh, off for the holidays yet, or still a little bit to do? While you're answering, I'll go on to the next step here. So next step is simply creating a slightly darker beige color. So if you see me dipping into my brown, that's why I'm dipping in there. I'm just kind of mixing into my existing beige and making it a little darker. If you don't have brown, you can just uh, make it a little darker by adding tiny bits of black and then maybe even some tiny bits of red and yellow just to keep it a little warmer. So just mixing more color into your existing beige. You're kind of diluting the white so that the color becomes a little bit darker. And all I'm going to do with that color is I'm just going to use it for, for some shading. So maybe like on the edges, kind of on the sides here, maybe along the bottom type thing. And because the beige is pretty fresh, you can kind of blend it in a little bit so it's not going to be a harsh line. You can kind of just paint it on. It might look a little harsh when you first paint it on, but if you just brush in between the wet beige and this kind of darker beige color, you can see it just blends in nicely. So I'm just going to do that along the sides and especially the bottoms. I was kind of saying the bottoms, we can start to separate the layers a bit better by doing this. So you can use this to kind of redo the nice curve that used to exist and then just kind of blend up into the beige. If something isn't blending, it just means your beige might be a little bit dry. So you can always grab a little more beige on your brush and use it to, uh, to blend in this new color. Weekend is okay. I work the next three days, but then I'm off the whole weekend. Nice. Okay. Yeah, so a little bit to go. It's hard to gauge. I know a lot of people, like, this was their last week, and I was like, really? You get a whole week, like, before Christmas? That's pretty nice. But I know others are required to work, like, right up until, so... I'm curious what everyone's doing. It's not Beehive! I accept donuts, but it's not Beehive. No. Oh. We can't eat a beehive. Candy. I guess honey is sweet. We don't want the whole hive though. Mmm. I like the shading when we put it on though. It's nice. Makes it more golden. So yeah, wherever you think needs definition for me, it's usually bottoms and the sides. We can see the layers coming through here. Not to be a long week in the medical field unless you request it off, right? Yeah, that's what I figured. Yeah, the work doesn't really stop, does it? I'm glad you get a weekend, though. That'll be very nice. You said a long weekend, I think. Whole weekend after. Okay, so I said we were going to do one more. Oh, yeah, we can do the little entrance way as well. So when I've done shading, I can use an even deeper brown. So again, if you have brown left over, you can just use that brown that you have or just mix a tiny bit more with yellow, red and black. And personally mixing here. Just getting that pudding brown back or anything close. It doesn't need to be exactly the pudding brown, just anything nice and deep and dark. And I'm just putting a nice little archway where the pathway is again, as if the pathway maybe leads into the cake. Little entranceway, all are welcome. Or beehive or donut pile, whatever you want it to be. Again, that's just dark brown. Now it really looks like a beehive. Oh no. Oh no, we're painting a beehive now. No. There we go. Goes into the abyss. Hey, Jen, welcome in. We're doing the candy land too. Woo. Oh, that's fine. No worries. I'm off starting the 22nd. What do you mean by 1.3? Oh, till till January 3rd or 4th. I see, I see. I thought you meant like 1.3 or 1.4 days. And I was like, what? <laughs> till Jan 3rd or 4th. That makes way more sense. 
Take the extra day. Oh, really, Jenna? Oh, lovely. Cindy's actually painting along. I wonder how many others will uh, will create a Candyland version. It would be fun to see. How's your uh, How's your day, Jen? Taking two weeks off in January. Oh, good, Nessa. 1.5 years, I assume? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, you corrected there. Holy moly. Are they, um... If you don't want to give out location, that's fine. I'm just wondering if they're in the States or are they out of country? Has it been, like, a struggle due to COVID, I assume? Or is it work-related? All right, I'm going to leave the uh, cake slash donut slash beehive for another minute just so people can see it. I think we'll do the candy cane pillars next just to get the white on. And then that way, if we need another layer, we can do that later. Oh, or we can do the we can do the cone next. Actually, we should do the cone because we have all these nice beiges and browns. Yes, we'll do that next and then we'll do the candy cane candy cane stuff. It's good, been fun. How's your weekend been? Ah, a little chaotic. Uh, Ontario's been announcing a lot of changes. <laughs> changes due to COVID. <laughs> so there's been a lot, of, a lot of talks about like gathering and stuff. <laughs> yeah, our province is uh, doing a lot right now. We're seeing our cases really influx. Uh, we hit 4,000 cases, new cases in a day today. And that's pretty abnormal for us. So uh, there's been a lot of a lot of rule changes, so it's been a little stressful, honestly. I don't like when uh, all these things happen so quickly. I can hardly keep up. Like, all of a sudden I'm eligible for a booster on Monday, and it was expected I wouldn't be till the new year, and it's just, there's a lot. It's good that I'm eligible, but yeah, there's a lot to think about. <laughs> oh, okay, Georgia, huh? Yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> I got you, okay. Georgia bad. <laughs> uh oh. <laughs> I was in Georgia recently, Nessa. <laughs> I was okay. I just think everywhere is bad, honestly, right now. I know I know they all fluctuate, but it's getting a little scary, at least here. No, it won't. It, it altered them. I'll tell you what it altered in a second. I'll uh, do this cone first, and then I'll explain in a second. Still good, but yeah. Uh, I just want to do the cone now that we have the beige still, the nice... <laughs> Different color than beige, different word than beige color. Anyway, uh, doing a nice triangle for a nice cone. So I kind of chose to tilt my cone as if it kind of spilled over, the ice cream spilled over onto my cake. So a cone that's kind of tilted a little bit, just a nice, nice long triangle. No worries, Nessa. Yeah, safe drive, safe drive. Okay, so yeah, what it changed was, um, and this is minor, but I, I will complain about it. Filling the cone in with beige, by the way. Um, I was supposed to cross the border to pick him up at an airport just over the border because it was significantly cheaper to fly there versus Toronto because Toronto is always expensive. And I was going to be able to do that without presenting a negative COVID test to come back into Canada because they had a rule that said if you travel for less than 72 hours out of country, then you don't need to come back with a negative test because it's kind of hard to have a negative test that will be acceptable within 72 hours of arriving back, if that makes sense, right? Like for me, driving across the border for like an hour or two, I would have to get a negative COVID test days before I even leave and then just present it at the border and it seems kind of silly. So that was a thing. I could leave and come back within 72 hours without a test and then two days ago they changed it and they were like, starting Tuesday, which is when I'm going, <laughs> starting Tuesday, you'll need to present a negative PCR test coming back into Canada. We don't care if you're gone for a week. We don't care if you're gone for an hour. I will be gone for an hour, or I would have been gone for like an hour or two, just going to the airport and back. And they were requiring that I pay for, PCRs are expensive up here too, uh, pay for a PCR test just to bring over with me just so I can show it on the way back in. So, <laughs> ugh. So it doesn't ruin things, it just means he has to walk again. <laughs> Sowie. <laughs> I was gonna pick him up nicely this time, now it's like, you gotta walk again, <laughs> and I can stay safely in my country without needing to present a PCR test to get back in. So that's all. <laughs> and I just think it's funny that they change it for the day that I need to do it. Like, it literally comes into effect on Tuesday, and I was like, just wait another day. <laughs> just one more day, please. <laughs> and they're like, no, Tuesday it is. I was like, alrighty. 
Yep. I hope it's not snowy. I hope it's not super cold. I'm thinking about that. That's why I was like, it would have been nice if I could just come over and drive you. But oh well. One last thing I'm doing to the cone before we move on is I'm grabbing a little bit of brown, any darker brown or like darker beige color and just dotting on, you know, the little indents of the cone. So just using my brush and doing a quick little brush up and just doing those in little rows kind of one at a time. They don't need to be all lined up, of course. You can kind of offset them, but just a little messy like that there's little kind of like little splotches all the way up so you can see all the, you know, crisscross cone shape. You can even add the brown and then go in and kind of like crisscross with beige type thing to kind of clean it up a little bit, but that's that's super fancy. I just like kind of dotting them on. They're all nice and textured there. Yeah, I'm getting them steps in. Yeah, it will be another different Christmas. Yeah, and just like plans constantly changing with that, but all manageable. Uh, how far do you have to walk? Uh, it's not far. I would guess it took him under 10 minutes last time to do the whole bridge. It's a very short bridge. I think it's the Rainbow Bridge. I'm not sure if it's near you. Days, stop. <laughs> I'll walk for days. <laughs> the things he does. <laughs> he walks for days to, to see me. Okay. <laughs> yep, yeah, right. Like, nah. <laughs> Couple hours, and it's all right. <laughs> All right, we've got the cone. I'm going to leave the cone floating right now because we want to put the ice cream on after the icing. So what I'm doing now is I'm grabbing my medium round brush. Oh, how'd I do the cone? So I just used the uh, the beige, Cindy. I just did the triangle. And then I grabbed brown with the tip of my medium round brush. And I just did small little brush strokes. And it is quite messy. It looks a little better from a distance, but all I did is I kind of pressed down the uh, the tip of my brush and stroked upwards a little bit, or you can stroke down either way. I do kind of a row of those little strokes, and then I'll do another row above that, kind of offsetting, and then another row, another row, etc. So it kind of makes it look like the beige is actually crisscrossing, when in reality we just kind of added the indents, if that makes sense. Ugh. So you can see up close, it's a little messy there but far away, it makes it look nice and textured. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know, I'm upset, I'm not happy. Even getting a PCR test is proving to be quite difficult. Because everyone's, yeah, everyone's wanting tests right now. Appointments are filling up. Anywho. Maybe it'll change for the way back. Maybe I'll just get a PCR test for the way back. I don't know. Got it. No worries, Cindy. Thanks for asking. All right, so I'll do the white now. So I'm just doing white pillars. So very simply just doing a nice big rectangle that goes up and down beside the cake. I'm doing one on each side and I'm just using plain white paint for now. I'll do like a white base. And then what we'll do is after the white dries, we can just do the red stripes. And that way we have, again, our nice white base. We don't need to stripe on two colors. We're just going to do a base of one color and then stripes of another. So you can make these as tall as you want. I make them pretty tall. They go almost to the top of the cake, not quite. Cake is a little higher. You can see I'm kind of using the width of my brush. I'm just kind of pressing down. The bristles are spreading, creates a nice wide pillar. Wayne Rainbow Bridge, Peace Bridge, St. Catherine Bridge are all not that far. Okay, okay. Yeah, I know all the bridges are semi-close together. I assume Rainbow Bridge. I think that's what we did last time. I think that was the recommended one. It was maybe just like the the least busy at the time. The Rainbow Bridge. I love all the little bridge names. Rainbow Bridge, Peace Bridge. Okay, I'm gonna do the second pillar here. Oh, that's a little higher. That's okay, I'll just raise this one a bit. Whoops. Down we go. 
And then remember, I'm going to top them off with some whipped cream or some whipped topping, whatever you want to call it. I guess whipped topping is just fake whipped cream, am I wrong? Like Cool Whip, yuck. That's like different category. Cool Whip is not a whipped cream to me. It's quite different. Whipped cream snob over here. I only like the whipped cream, not whipped topping. <laughs> Excuse me. I thought Rainbow Bridge is where we meet our pets. Oh, it is though. It kind of is. Same. It is, but not not the one. <laughs> not the one in Niagara. <laughs> Yeek. <laughs> the sads. You're right, it is. I always forget that. Until I have a scenario where I need to think of the rain- They cross the rainbow bridge, yeah. So he's like- Wood's like a dead pet. Sorry, no. <laughs> he's crossing the rainbow bridge. No, not funny. Means our pets all go to Valhalla. I don't think Cool Whip contains a single dairy ingredient. There you go. So I guess it is fairly enough a different category. I don't know. I just find people compare it to whipped cream. Like it's not though. All right. Speaking of which, we're gonna add some little whipped topping or whipped cream on top. So kind of just adding a couple little layers, kind of layers of these little curves here. So I do a nice curve that kind of comes down and up. It's the width of the pillar. And then I'll do another curve that's slightly smaller, just resting on top. It's kind of like we're creating the cake again, almost, just with easier brush strokes. We don't need to do a huge area. And then the last part is I just do a little kind of curly top as if, you know, like when you do a little whip topping, it's like, you know? Oh, wow, hello. Mud for 500 bits? That's a, that's a lot to drop in. Welcome in. Just stopping through, showing some love to streamers who seem to be enjoying- Oh, thanks! I am enjoying myself. I hope everyone else is enjoying too. Thank you, Mud. My name is Mud. Thanks so much! That's really nice that you're going around and doing that. That is really sweet. Putting trust in uh, just the fact that the streamer is enjoying themselves. Thank you very much. We're doing a step-by-step -step painting tutorial for people who want to follow and watch along. Hope you're having a good day too, Mud. Thank you. Not had it in who knows how long I'm making my own whipped cream. There you go, yeah. I think it's worth making your own or just getting the, the good canned whipped cream, you know? The real stuff. Alright, here's a second one, and then I'll do the same thing, just a little kind of curly top. Just like whipped cream, you know? Alright, let's keep it like that. I'll take a pause for a minute or two, and then maybe we'll do this uh, trail next, because I'm sure, yeah, red and green and blue is nice and dry now. Mm-hmm. Good. An amazing day. That's great, Mud. I'm really glad to hear. Amaretto. No, it wouldn't. <laughs> That's your own custom. Mm-hmm. Oh, Elvin said Uber sucks. I see. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I find uh, I rarely use Uber Taxi, etc. But when I have, Uber has uh, come out on top, honestly, price-wise or Lyft. I actually don't use Uber. I don't have a Uber on my phone because of bad experiences with Uber. Ugh. I'm a Lyft girl now. Only when I need it. Lasagna in a crock pot? How do you do that? That sounds interesting. Yeah, Uber at one point charged me a whack of money um, for trips that I didn't take. It was really great. As I went, uh, I went on a trip years ago, and when I came back from the trip, I was still being charged for trips in the in the place I was visiting and no longer in. It was my bank that caught it. It wasn't even Uber. Uber was just like, yeah, that's fine. My bank was like, hey, we think you're home, right? And I was like, yeah. And they're like, better check out the Uber charges. And I was like, yikes, dude, hundreds of dollars. <laughs> and I was like, yep, please put a stop to those. And Uber was no help. Zero help. Uber doesn't have, from what I remember, Uber didn't have a telephone line. They were one of those companies that insisted you do everything online. It was like contact them through Twitter or another social media. I forget if they even had an email. I was like, I just need to be in contact with somebody and not a social media manager. I'm very sorry, but like, please, this is like a money bank, maybe fraud issue. And they just did not care. 
so sorry to hear, you know, that type of thing. Oh, that's not what we were expecting. I'm exhausted. Hey, Greg. How are your highlights going? Chantilly cream. Pinterest, I will. I just didn't know lasagna was possible in a slow cooker. All right, that was probably enough time. That battery going, it means some time has passed. So let's do um, the rest of this trail here, this little rainbow trail. So we have two more colors left. Uh, we have yellow and orange. So I'm going to mix yellow with a little bit of white on my plate. I always say that my yellow paint is not very well pigmented. So I find using a little bit of white in there really helps brighten it up and it allows it to stick on top of color. So when I was saying before how we can use this color to overlap, the white will be key in that. So again, I'm just mixing yellow and white together. So it's still a nice bright yellow just with the added power of the white paint, the added pigment, the added coverage. And I'm just trying to slot that in in between the red and green as clean as I can. You can see I kind of wipe away paint here and there. If it's still very wet, you can just use your finger and kind of wipe it away or alter it a little bit. So you can see I'm just overlapping some of the red because I decided the red was taking up a lot of space. And I'll try and fit it in between. And there we go. See, it's a lot easier when you're able to overlap. You can just kind of make room for where you need it. <laughs> Didn't finish the left size, the entire highlights. Didn't get so much. Yay! Lovely. Oh, some stars! Oh, good idea. Everyone liked the painting. They asked about it at the start and they, uh, they seem to really like the finished product, so I'm glad. Happy everybody likes that painting so much. I'm gonna do more of it. Different design, bigger canvas, more complicated eventually. Plans for the new year. All right, there's yellow. Mm -mm. Oh yeah, I'll probably, after the stream, Charlene, I don't usually look things up during stream, but thank you. Okay, and then I'm just mixing an orange. Orange is our last color that slots in between the green and the red, or excuse me, green and blue. I was looking at the wrong color, and so I said the wrong color. Uh, so <laughs> mixing orange is uh, red and yellow mixed together, so you can just put some red into that yellow mixture you had if you'd like. And yeah, last color, just in between the green and blue, just trying to carefully slot it in. So using a little pressure at the start, you can increase pressure on the brush a little as you go along. That'll create a larger stroke. Mostly just trying to fit it in, in between. There we go. Not perfect, but we can always touch it up later if we need to. We get the general vibe of that gummy candy strip. And later on, we're actually gonna sprinkle on some white just to make it look a little more sugary. Cause those strips of candy are like super sugary. They just have big chunks of sugar on them. So it's a necessary step. But yeah, you can uh, go back and touch up other colors if you need to. I'm actually just mixing a little blue cause I feel like the blue is now cut off a little. So yeah, just kind of going between each color you can wait for them to dry if you want, just to be extra safe, or if you feel okay about, you know, just going right along the edge. That'll work too. Yeah, that's fine. Again, the green got a little covered, but that's all right. Yeah, the crusty sugar, exactly. Crusty. Okay, quick minute or two for that. And then I think what we'll start to do is plan out um, where our bridge is going. We're gonna use some white paint next. Uh, we will kind of map out the bridge and that way we can get some white on so that we can put on some red later to really help it pop out. And we can plan out where our nice uh, gumdrop trees and the lollipops are gonna go as well. So we're going to use white for a base layer for all of it. So it's going to look very just white and stark for a while with all these random shapes. And then the fun part will be filling them up a little bit later with all the nice beautiful colors and stuff. Candyland. <laughs> Is he screaming? Oh, he's licking, <laughs> I see. From my end, Gray kind of looks like his mouth is just. <laughs> Thought he was screaming Candyland. <laughs> ah. <laughs> That's a lot. I see the lick now, though. Those pigs are cute. 
What if we had a licking bun that just had a huge tongue like that and it was licking the screen? <laughs> we can call it bun candy. <laughs> Aaron Boo candy. <laughs> Would that be great? Or some reference to Candyland, maybe? Like a sugary bun, you know? I'll think of something. I think that would be funny. Bun with a lollipop. Yeah, so somehow, Gray, I think like a subtle one, like I was just thinking like holding a lollipop that might be a little, a little too, too on the nose. And also like, how do you use that? <laughs> just a bun with a lollipop. It's kind of an uwu thing. It's to be like, hee hee. But something licking or like sugary or glittery could be fun. I do have bun fleshies left. Yes, Charlene, I had a lot of interest in them at the start. So uh, I commissioned some more to be made, so I actually do have a fair amount of stock. And uh, the Volcano Play keychains are back as well. I was able to shift some of the raw pieces into the keychain category. Um, so yeah, the raw raw pieces have reduced. There's still some available, but that means there's some keychains left. So those were sold out for a week or two, but I, uh, I recently stocked those up again. Things are back. Yeah. So you can see all those on the website. It should say that those are all still available. All right, I'm going to pour some more white and start to kind of sketch out our other areas that I was just talking about there, the bridge and the lollipops, gumdrop, uh, I keep wanting to say buttons, gumdrop trees. I see uh, plushies and keychains. Oh, okay. <laughs> I love how you're saving it for Boxing Day. It's just a little ritual day. Good, I'll be ready, I'll be ready. All right, so let's uh, plan out our bridge first. So I'm, I'm using white paint. You can see I'm using my medium round brush. I just really like it for sketching. It's just obviously a pointed brush. It's kind of like a pencil, right? So that's what I'm using, but you can use whatever you like, whether it's a smaller or bigger brush. Uh, first thing I'm gonna do is kind of map out the bridge. So I'll walk you through that because it's a little bit of a mind bender because it's a little three dimensional here, but I'll do my best. So first thing, <clears throat> excuse me, first thing I did so I went to the bottom right where the blue is and I'm creating an arc that's going to go off to the left. So essentially we're creating the closest side of the bridge to us, or I guess the, if you're facing the castle, it'll be the right hand side of the bridge. <laughs> I was gonna say, depends where you're facing. But yeah, starting at the blue, just taking my white, doing a little archway. I know it's a little scary, but remember it's white paint, very easy to cover up. If you make a mistake, you can cover it up with your chocolate pudding or something else. That's why we're using white. It's really easy to kind of cover up if you make an error. But so far, so good. We're just doing a nice curve going up. And it kind of comes back down. Doesn't quite reach before hitting the edge of the canvas here. So as if the bridge is starting, we don't see the end of it. And the mind bending part <laughs> is here. On this side, we're going to do the same thing. We're creating an arc. This time the arc won't, you know, go as far. We're probably only going to hit the top of it if that makes sense. And we're just going to go over like this. So essentially we've created the bottom edge of the bridge and we will see the top, we won't see like over top, we will see the little railing on top. So we'll do that next. But for now, this is kind of the bottom edge of the bridge or the bottom side of the bridge. We're seeing underneath the bridge. It's a little weird for now, but it'll make sense soon, hopefully. Yeah, I know, Gray, it's a... <laughs> When I was doing this too, I was muttering to myself, it was during my no mic stream and I was like talking to myself. I was like, that's not right. <laughs> that's okay. <laughs> that's not right. <laughs> okay. And we're going to use the white for the railing too because we do want to uh, map out where the railing is. So it's a nice white clean base for the red. Again, the red kind of signifies in my opinion, some like licorice. We can do like licorice um, railings and stuff. So the uh, railing, what we're going to do is we'll start again at the blue, same spot we started. We're just doing a vertical line straight up and down. That's kind of the first little railing you would see, or not railing, um, little post you would see. There'd be one here and then there'd be one here, but we can't see it because it's behind the bridge. So we're not going to worry about it. Okay, and then every like inch or two, you know, whatever spacing you want, just try and keep it relatively consistent. You're going to put another straight vertical line. And the hardest part about this, in my opinion, is keeping the lines vertical. You can see they're just vertical, vertical. They're all um, parallel. You're not twisting the lines compared to where it is on the arch. It's not like they're going like this, this, this. They're just going straight up, straight up, straight up everywhere. So I think that's the hardest part just to 
at least wrap my mind around when I'm doing this. You gotta keep them straight. It's harder than it looks. <laughs> You're always tempted to like go with the curve, I find. All right, so just leaving about the same amount of space, another post. Again, straight up and down. And I bet I can fit one more right there. All right, see that happening there? This is gonna be the one side here. I think that makes it a little more clear and obvious. Uh, you can keep just posts if you want. What I like to do is even connect the top of the post. So I kind of do a second curve like this all the way across as if it's a nice railing to hold all the way. And that's that, again, right hand side of the bridge. If we're looking at the Kate Castle, that's the right hand side. Again, this is me rubbing away a little bit of white. I think I made it a little too thick. Or later on, I can just use some pudding color and get rid of it. There we go. Sunshine, hello. <laughs> I always said I can't draw a straight line. Oh, hi, Erin. Hi. Just some practice. I know it's uh, frustrating at the start when you can't do a stick figure, it seems. But that's how you get good is you got to practice. You got to practice even straight lines here and there. So that's one railing, and um, in theory, you might be able to see the second railing on the other side kind of peeking up here, right? Because if this is the bottom of the bridge, like this, theoretically there'd be a post here, which we can't see, maybe a post here, and then maybe a post like here, right? And we might be able to see that, you know what I mean? Ah, uh, who wants to bonk him? Mods, you got to... Uh... You got 10 seconds or else I'm a bonk. Uh, buy followers, primes, and viewers. Nice. I always want to give a chance to my mods because I know they like bonking. It's rare to get a bonk. <laughs> Thank you, sunshine. <laughs> Thank you. Deleted and banned. See ya. Anyway, so yeah, in theory, you could see a post here, a post here, and a post maybe like here. So if you want to add a second set of posts that will be slightly visible, see on the left hand side, you'd be able to see it like just peeking up here and then on this side, you can do that. If that's not too much of a mind bender for you, I'll just complete it just so you can see what it would be like. That would be the other side, but we're gonna cover this. That's the bottom, bottom part of the bridge. I'm just showing you what the post would look like on the other side. So there you go. Hopefully that's not too mind bendy. When we fill up this edge here, it'll be a little bit easier to see. Pretty, yeah. Dude, that's what uh, Forest slash Wood said. He said it looks like a beehive as well. We gotta put some icing on that thing. <laughs> There's contingencies with being my follower. <laughs> I'll buy them, but I have to screen you first. Thank you. <laughs> All right, just because we have the white, I'll keep working with the white and then we can go back and clean up this bridge. I know it looks a little messy for now, but we can just leave it alone for the time being. So we have some fun little things to add here. We have our, again, gumdrop trees, some lollipops or whatever else you can think of too. You can get creative with other Candyland type items. Uh, if you want to do any gumdrop trees, all I'm doing for now is doing some very long, tall triangles because what we're going to do is we're laying down the white base and then we're going to put some little kind of gumdrops on top, right? So we want to have a nice clean white base so our colors can all pop very nicely. I'm going to finish my painting after I have Vagina's Dry. I have no idea what paint isn't drying well. My colors are mixing. I am frustrated. Yeah, take a break. It's no worries, Cindy. You can always watch this a little later once things have dried. I know sometimes your painting reaches a point where it's like it's just too wet to fiddle with. And uh, I do my best to like plan out where we are, but I know sometimes at home people have different drying times or have used, you know, different paint, more paint, less paint. So no worries at all. If it's causing frustration, just uh, take a little break. You're good. The stuff later is the fun part too in this painting. That's another kind of thing I was noticing when I designed this. I was like, oh, it's a lot of work at the start, honestly. A lot of planning out and kind of, in my opinion, boring looking stuff. Like I'm just adding white everything right now, which is not fun, right? You're just kind of like, what is this? It's a cone. <laughs> but later it's more fun because it's all dry and then you're just like making rainbows and putting little dots everywhere. It's a lot more fun. Mm-hmm. 
Make orange icing. Definitely won't look like honey. True. <laughs> I do a creamsicle ice cream on top. I'm sure that will absolutely not help the situation either. Thanks, Alvin. Yeah, they're just uh, lots of swirling. They kind of turned out a little different than my originals, honestly. I always try and, of course, make them similar to the original, but I like them both. These ones, I think, are a little more kind of mixed in together, if that makes sense. Like, I got a little bit of purple going, almost accidental. Maybe on purpose, who knows? No, it was accidental. Just because the blue and pink were wet, so yeah, that's what happened. Yeah, you could use a hairdryer for sure. Yeah, sometimes it's just a good excuse for a break as well, though. Alright, I am adding a tree here, so hopefully it doesn't confuse, confuse you too much on the railing situation. I'll just try and put it kind of light here so we can still see the railing going on on top of it, but this tree is behind it. So I'm just adding it for now. And then I'll probably do the bridge actually first and then work around. Uh, I don't know. We'll do the tree maybe. I'm not sure. That'll be a game time decision. I got a nice big tree right here. Ooh. And again, I really like the uh, kind of longer triangles, like taller triangles. Keeping it a little bit like thin all the way down. More like isosceles triangles. The two even sides. I've used that word twice today now. Yay for trigonometry. And then I'll do a nice big um, lollipop right here. Big one. Did I miss one? Oh yeah, there's one over here. Okay. So again, you can put these wherever you want. You can fill up way more if you need to. You can add different things. I'm just trying to stick to my original just to keep it similar to what I promised here. But yeah, when we were creating this on Twitch a week or two ago, there were so many suggestions with what kind of candies we could add. Different elements, so I'm sure others could get very, very creative with it. I'm gonna make that lollipop a bit bigger. I want this one nice and big. And again, white will just allow all the colors to really pop off. That's why we're doing the white. If we were to try and put the rainbow right on top of the brown, it wouldn't show through. It would be kind of messy. It wouldn't look bright and beautiful. Oops, that was a little yellow. That's fine. So yeah, that's why this white or just any light color is key. Even if the white mixes, as you can see, a little with yellow or something, it's no big deal. Just as long as it's a nice light base for our nice bright colors to go on top of. Ooh, I got a little botched. There we go. Okay, yeah, so as I was saying, this is kind of the kind of the boring work here of just putting on all these little white structures and then we can fill them all up and pretty them up after. That'll be the fun part. All right, I'll give a minute or two if you're still adding any structures. And then what we can do is we can go back to the uh, the cake slash donut pile slash beehive, whatever you want it to be. <laughs> we can pretty it up again, the more fun part coming up where we can ice it and give it some color. Turn these into nice candy canes rather than just white pillars. There's a lot of just like white frosting stuff right now. These are just like fondant elements. We gotta pretty them up and paint them up, all these nice beautiful colors. But frosting is the best, better than candy. Is it better? There's so many candy varieties, but at the same time candy's kind of all the same, isn't it? I guess a cream cheese frosting would top all of it for me. If this was all cream cheese frosting elements, then sign me up. As long as it's not fondant. I said maybe it's fondant. No, thank you. I would rather not. But yeah, general frosting I will, I will support for sure. Yes, just put it on everything. Any pastry. Stick some cream cheese frosting, it's infinitely better. <laughs> I 
a little cupcake with my frosting. That would have been cute. I guess we did like the cake castle, but a little cupcake would have been cute. That'd be a nice sweet item. Okay, I'm gonna reload with some white. More frosting, please. Onto the plate you go. All right, so again, we're getting into the more fun parts now of just decorating, quite literally, like decorating all of our sweets. So first thing I'm doing is creating some frosting. I'm just grabbing big blobs of white and trying to make it look like it's just dripping down our cake. So I'm kind of going along the top edge of this layer, or I guess the bottom edge of the next layer, kind of keeping that curve that we saw there. And just grabbing big blobs and kind of just moving my brush down and up, down and up, down and up. Quickly, slowly to get nice big drips going on. Nice and frosted. Yes, cream cheese frosting is a favorite. Or you can clean yours up. You can make it a cleaner frosting, but I like the idea of it just like dripping down. Like it's just sandwiched between those two layers and just dripping. Really appreciate making this too feel for real and I have a great time giggling tonight. So there's that lovely. That's uh, that's the main goal, Cindy. I was honestly, as I hope we all know, kidding when I said band if you don't attend slash pain. I'm really happy that you attempted just for fun and gave you some giggles. That was the main point is that it just, we needed to see it come to life. I needed to do it, you know? It was time. It was enough time that had passed for this request that it were to happen. So I'm happy that I did it as well. It's like a, is it a weight off my shoulders? I don't know. It feels kind of like it, even though I didn't have an obligation to do it. It's like, ah, yes, <laughs> I met that, met that uh, achievement or requirement this year. You know, we did Candyland. Highlight for sure. <laughs> okay, and I'm just doing one last layer up here. You can of course do the whole top as well because the top is exposed, although I will be covering a good chunk of it, cover it up with my ice cream. But just in case, we should just frost that whole layer and let it drip down. Yum! Oh, it looks so good! I love lemon blueberry cake with sour lemon cream cheese. Oh my gosh. A cream cheese alteration. I'm here for it. Some flavored cream cheese icing. Sounds amazing. It does. Can you make it for us? Our next dessert. Thank you. Can't wait to get cooking streams going. Maybe I'll try and make like desserts that I've heard about in stream. I had another idea though too. I don't know if I want to say it, but I might. <clears throat> Here, champ. Thank you. Surprising you're doing a Christmas theme thing. It's like, yeah, sunshine. I um I kind of thought Candyland kind of fit in Christmas. I know it's not really like Christmas, but it's kind of like holiday sweet celebration, you know? You know, you know? So I thought it kind of fit. I feel like with holidays, I think of sweets in general and just like magical stuff like that. But I agree, I know. Last year I did a lot of a lot of Christmas holiday stuff, very specifically, very on the nose. So uh, I think it's nice that we did a little bit of a switch up, but I get it for sure. Ooh, yes, please do. So yeah, I've been thinking more about um, my like eventual cooking streams. Sorry, I'll teach a step and then I'll talk more about this. I need to keep going on this. <laughs> uh, next, I'll do the red of the candy cane here. So I'm just taking red with my medium round brush or detail brush and I'll be doing curves. I'll be curving kind of down to the left on the left side and down to the right on the other side. Uh, yeah, I had an idea the other day for the cooking streams. I was like, I don't know really what I want to make. I know I'm more into baking, for example, and I probably would result in me making more like sweet treats here and there, which is always fun. But I was kind of like, what do people want to see me make? What would they, you know, be curious about? And I had this idea. I had this idea that I would focus on um, wild recipes from TikTok. Thoughts, thoughts, thoughts. Because uh, I always see freaking wild things being made on TikTok. Not even that I'm on there that much, but I still see things on like other social medias and that people send me and it's like, here, like, like Forrest and I tried to make that like multi-layer potato thing. And I think that would be funny to continue that trend if I like went on TikTok and I was like, okay, we found this really weird looking thing that 
claims to have worked if you do all these different steps. Will it work type thing? Because I'm like skeptical about a lot of these TikTok things. So I would love to put them to the test and see if I can make some of them. And like, not to say they're all skeptical. There's there's some really good recipes on TikTok too. Like there was an account that was shown to me that was like all just like really nice looking desserts. And that would be like a challenge. That would be like really difficult to do, but it'd be great if I could. But then there's like, there's trendy ones as well. So I was thinking of trying that. Oh, you're trying to bake Christmas, Christmas cookies to decorate as well. TikTok recipes aren't real. I don't know. That's the that's the fun of it, Gray. We can figure out if they are. <laughs> Tell me where I can be here for a sec. No worries. Yeah, keep baking. Keep having fun. Yeah. Oh, not to decorate. Gotcha. I guess when I think of Christmas cookies, I think of kind of classic sugar cookies, but maybe I'm wrong. But yeah, that's that's kind of the thing, Gray. Like, are they? I'm always skeptical about a bunch of them. Whenever I see some, I'm like, that wouldn't work. Like, I, I know that there's some that are like meant to be meme and they're meant to create that reaction, but some of them you're kind of like, would it work? And I want to put them to the test. I'll have to collect some, but I figured that's an easy way to collect some as well as to be able to just have a look at some TikToks and see what they look like in the end. Say, all right, let's see if we can replicate. But yeah, that way we can have a good mix of like, I don't want to say like meme foods, but kind of like, yeah, just for fun, really extravagant, like maybe really fried type stuff. I don't know, just, just fun foods, fun, ridiculous things to make and try out. The salmon and rice, I don't know about that one. You sent me one that was like the, like steak and fries, I think at one point, Jen, and I was like, oh my God. Like, like really nicely done, like Parmesan fries with all the nice spices in there and stuff. That one's looked good. Just chocolate chip, oh, classic, classic. Watch Gordon Ramsay tested a lot of recipes and responses were hilarious. Oh yeah, so he's done it before, huh? He beat me. <laughs> Excuse me, I'm sure he has a lot to say about like, the multi-layer potato ones and all of that. But again, I wonder if some of them work, you know? I just don't know. I just wanna know. Oh, that's sweet, Jen. Oh, Cindy's the North Carolina queen. Dude, I am to you, sunshine. That's where I fail. I tried to make a uh, shortbread at one point and that's where I was failing, was kind of rolling it out and getting it all together. Yeah, no good. All right, I guess I have my red. I'm gonna keep working on the cake, everybody. So I'm just going to uh, mix together our nice creamsicle color. I went for a nice orange for the ice cream. I thought we were kind of lacking some orange and creamsicle was suggested to me as a flavor. So we went with that. So I'm just mixing some yellow into my red, maybe a little white to brighten it up a little bit. And we can stick that you know what, I'm just gonna mix a new one because there's some blue getting in there. It's making it yucky. Gross, I'm running out of room very quickly here. I've been painting a lot today. Anyway, getting a nice creamsicle orange color. And you're just kind of plopping that on where the cone is here. So as if the ice cream cone is flipped upside down, it's gonna kind of melt down as well. So you can just kind of make it drip down. Maybe a couple layers there. Yum. Yeah, I almost did mint, but I hate mint ice cream. And I was like, why would I do that? I just wanted the color mint in there, but creamsicle was a good choice as well. So yeah, just kind of blotching it on, allowing it to drip down. You can see it still kind of has a little bit of the round ice cream shape, but mostly it's just starting to melt and drip. So many cookers, and I almost feel like I could do it, but then I have pets that would never sell food for my home like that. Even if it's just for fun, though, to start, you could see if you like it enough. Best short for recipe is cry rolling. It's a bar. Oh, doesn't that would be sick? Feel free, sunshine, if you want. There's a food channel in the Discord if you feel like sharing it. Uh, what else can we do here? Oh yes, all right, before we move on to um, cleaning up all these guys here, we're just going to add some sprinkles to our icing. I guess that's totally optional, but I think it just pretties it up even more. 
So just taking my medium round brush, or you can use a detail brush if you'd rather be a little more detailed. Just dipping into each little color I have and adding a couple, you know, small thin lines, little tick marks if you will. And those are our nice little sprinkles. So I'm starting with red. We have our orange from our creamsicle, so I'll just dip into that next. That's a nice easy one. Just a small little brush stroke each time. It's just a small little sprinkle. Quick little stroke. There's a secret, wanna hear it? Yeah, to sugar cookies. It was shortbread that I had issues with, but still I'm down. Okay, I'm just going through each each color I've used, each main color I've used, like a nice yellow, a green, a blue. Just thrown in small little sprinkles everywhere. It just makes it nice and rainbowed and filled up. Green, if you need to remix that, is yellow and blue mixed together. Cute, and then blue. I'll do some blue to finish her off. <laughs> Seeker gets someone else to do, I love that. <laughs> Powdered sugar instead of flour, there it is. I wonder if the same happens for shortbread, because that was the one I had issues with. Ugh. Yeah, I made shortbread, not shortbread, excuse me, sugar cookies with my friends recently, and we used the powdered sugar, so somebody in the group knew. It wasn't me. <laughs> Someone else knew. That is genius. Isn't that fun, sunshine, when you have a huge recipe, you're like, all right, let's like quarter this down, <laughs> doing all the, uh, all the calculations. All right, nice, pretty icing. I'll leave that for a quick minute. Then we just gotta fill up our little areas here. We can do our red licorice. We can put black underneath the bridge and just kind of dot or swirl on some colors. Yeah, that's true. It makes total sense too. And again, we used that last weekend, actually. Somebody knew the secret. All right, I'm just excited to fill up these white areas here. So I'm gonna go ahead and start. Um, I'll start with the bridge just so we can really see the bridge. I know it doesn't really make sense because we have things behind it, but I'm just going to try my best to work around it and I can always put another layer of red on top after. But it just helps me kind of see where the bridge is and all the other stuff going on. So let me go ahead here. So I'm just taking red paint and you can see I'm simply overlapping the white that we already have. So it's essentially just like you're filling as in between the lines as you can, or I guess on top of the line you should say. But hopefully a little more fun and easy now that we've done the hard work of like mapping it all out. You know, we've done all the complicated mind bending work of getting this bridge properly built and now we can just fill it in. So I'm using red to signify licorice. I don't do anything more to the red to make it more licorice-y. I just kind of imagine that it is licorice. So we got that first railing there. And again, you can always go back with brown to kind of cover up any areas that you don't like or if any white is still showing and you don't want to cover it in red you can use some brown instead to kind of chop it up doing the bottom edge too whoops got a little out of hand and then again i have the other railing showing i kind of described that already but it's kind of just peeking in from that side here you only see the other side we're going to fill in all of this with black actually which we can do now just so we can really solidify the whole bridge Hello, Lumpy, welcome in. A wee potato, hello, hello. How has your weekend been? I almost said week, because I usually do this on Fridays. I'm still not used to it, it's Sunday. Are you off for the week this week, or do you have to go into work for the last little bit before holidays? Oh, I see sunshine. Oh, are you painting? Are you painting, Lumpy? So again, what I'm doing now is I'm taking black and I'm filling in the bottom of the bridge. So hopefully this kind of brings it all together. Your mind can stop bending around. You can hopefully see what this bridge is doing here. So I'm painting the underside of the bridge. So I will be going over top of these colors. I go over top of this line here. 
I'm going over top of any of the other posts that I was showing you just for perspective reasons. But yeah, we don't see those, right? Because this is all the underside of the bridge. We're seeing under the bridge. We're seeing the pudding flow under the bridge. And now we can see just the railings and the other side. If someone were walking, we would see their body, but not their feet. It's all covered up. Cool. You're on vacation. That's so good to hear, Lumpy. I've been checking in with everyone because I know some people are working this next week and some are off. So that's really nice to hear that you have some time. Panting. Oh, no, it's okay. Did you say? Oh, you did say panting. I thought you said, is painting too much excitement this weekend? <laughs> I was like, painting is exciting. Yes. <laughs> What, uh, what happened this weekend that was exciting? You're panting about it. Oh, we need to sugar the- oh my goodness, I almost forgot the sugar on the pathway. Let's do that now before we color and everything more. Oh my goodness, I'm getting ahead of myself. All right, we got to sugar our nice little pathway here. It looks nice right now, but it's almost too bright. We want to sugar it down like that nice candy that has the chunky sugar on top. So to sugar it, I'm just using the same medium round brush and white paint. I'm kind of dipping in the white paint and then I'm tapping off a little bit just on the side here. And then that way when I lightly tap kind of the tips of the bristles that are all kind of frayed by the way, so it helps with this, it kind of stipples on the white and creates a nice little sugary topping. Looks like sprinkled chunky sugar. Just like this rainbow candy has. It has huge amounts of white sugar that you can see and feel on your tongue. It's very chunky and rough. <laughs> So just tapping that on very lightly. Again, I just kind of grab white, tap it off on the side here on a paper towel and then tap on my painting. And that way only a little bit comes off nice and transparent. And then going all the way down this nice little trail. If it gets a little messy, that's okay. Maybe some sugar fell off a bit into the pudding, but otherwise just mainly looking at that rainbow road there. Yeah, there we go. That looks better. That's more like our candy. You voice acted? Whoa, that's exciting. That's very cool, Lumpy. Very neat. Is that something you've ever done before? No one's strange. It's now done by three hours of Minecraft. Very cool. Very nice. Yeah, is that a new thing that you're voice acting? That's a very specific kind of niche thing. Okay, sprinkly pathway, very good. All right, let's do... Oh, sorry, that's just on a mod, you're fine. Ah, oh, thank you, Gray. I didn't like the suck balls and that's fair. Suck balls at making voices. I see, you make good jokes, got it. <laughs> it was to help out a friend, so that's very nice too. All right, let's do, um, let's do the lollipops first. I'll go through those and then we can do the dots of the gumdrops. And then I think all that's left after that is uh, just the little ripples in the in the pudding. It helps kind of see the pudding movement and, you know, thickness a little bit better. Okay, so for these uh, lollipops, what I did is I just added the three primary colors one at a time. And as I added each one, I was just very careful to kind of keep each color in its own lane, if you will. And as you add them, they kind of blend a little bit as you're brushing along. I'll kind of show you. It's easier to show rather than talk about, but you're essentially going one color at a time. There's three primary colors, right? The three that I use, red, yellow, and blue are the three paint colors. So I start just with, let's start with yellow because that's a nice light one, right? We want to have a nice clean slate for yellow. It's a little hard to add yellow once a bunch of colors are on. So I'm just doing a nice little swirl starting from the middle, going out like that. And I'm going to do that to each lollipop. I'm going to do every single one here. And again, switch to a detail brush if you want, because there's definitely some smaller lollipops going on. I think I'll do the medium round for now and then switch to small later. Just trying to do a nice little swirl. Okay. Now let me show you what happens. So I got my yellow, so I need red and blue coming up. So I'm gonna grab red and I'm going to try my best to get a nice clean band of red on. But at the same time, I'm kind of overlapping the yellow a little bit. So it will kind of blend and mix a little bit. And when that happens, that's a good thing because it's gonna create a nice orange because red and yellow make orange. So as you're kind of 
twisting along here. You can see a little bit of red stays behind, or a lot of red, but also you get a little bit that kind of blends in, hopefully, to a little bit of an orange. So it doesn't need to be perfect, of course. It's not like you need one perfect band of every color, and that's kind of my point. You just want to mix it a little bit and kind of accept it for what it is. You could go in and fiddle a little, as I'm doing, but I would recommend mostly to just leave it alone. And there you go. You can kind of see all those different colors starting to swirl together. And then with the addition of blue, we'll get the remaining kind of purples and greens in there, plus the blue that we're missing. So the last color is going to be harder, just because there's small a smaller amount of space, but still absolutely doable. I'm going to go to my smaller brush here, just because I have smaller lollipops here. I know I keep saying lollipops, it's just for fun. I know it's lollipop. So again, just painting kind of like tight to the yellow, and then I can even just move my brush in between if it didn't mix too much. And purposely try and kind of mix them around a little bit. You just gotta be careful because, you know, yellow, for example, is a very light color. And if you start to really blend the red in, it's gonna take over the yellow to the point where it just disappears. So you just gotta be a little careful with that. You're trying to mix, but you're trying to kind of keep a little, little glint of each color. Maybe you kind of see it more in the middle and not the outsides, that's fine. You get the idea though, they're all nice rainbows. Lost tomorrow's had to rush to pee many times because of laughter. <laughs> yep, not quite the yellow brick, but a little sugar, sugar chunk road, you know? <laughs> you remember my style? <laughs> it's just waiting for you. All right, I'm gonna switch back to medium round for the big lollipop, just to add the blue. That's our last little color. And again, with the blue, <clears throat> you should start to see a little bit of purple and a little bit of green. Again, this might be a little bit of a messy part, but just try your best. Hopefully you can see each color kind of coming through. There's a nice blue, there it is. I can definitely see a little green. Just gotta be careful, because again, the blue's a very powerful color. So yeah, trying to mold it a little into the red. There we go, a little into the yellow. We start to see it all kind of combining. We wanna keep it semi-clean, but semi-combined. That's good, I'm just gonna keep it like that. I know it's so crusty looking. Mmm, <laughs> crusty. Same with this one. I'm just using my smaller brush to get a little more control. Yeah, the one thing you want to definitely avoid, again, is either kind of eating up an entire cover color or running into a scenario where you're mixing all three colors. Because if you remember at the start, I was saying that's kind of how you make brown is technically all three of the primary colors. So it's definitely going to create kind of a muddy color if you get to a point where for some reason you're mixing all three at once. And again, that might very well happen because you have all the colors wet. So if you'd rather just take your time on these lollipops and just... Uh, add each color individually and kind of wait for things to dry, that's totally fine. Or you can just go for it and see how it goes. <clears throat> this red feud is loose, like in the bakery. <laughs> I'm doing good, thanks Lumpy, you're decent, decent. Um, as you know, country is making many changes due to COVID, which has been kind of stressful to follow, honestly, but it's all good, everything's okay. Just always a little bit scary and nightmarish when all this happens at once in a two-day period. But, you know, otherwise I'm fine. <laughs> Looking forward to holidays, etc. <laughs> oh, oh, no! Is that new? The party time one? Time wrapped in a little bundle and having a party that's so dang cute! Lollipop cute. All right, let me move on to the gumdrop trees as I keep chatting with you as well. So gumdrop trees are pretty straightforward. We're just choosing whatever colors we want and just putting nice little dots onto the trees. Um, I chose to not go for a full rainbow. I kind of went for actually like the secondary colors. I went orange, purple, green. I threw in a little bit of red and then also some white just to kind of top it off and brighten it up. So choose whatever colors you like. If you want the whole rainbow, there's no issue at all with that. I just figured I'd go a little less than the whole rainbow just because we did the rainbow for the lollipops, right? So I'll start with um, purple. 
So that's red and blue mixed together. Need more purple in this painting, you know. And we have our nice white triangles and very simply I'm just going to start filling those up with little dots. So I'm just using the tip of my medium round brush and doing a small little brush stroke and that creates a nice little dot. And you know what, these are gumdrops, so I mean even if they're not perfect circles, I think that's kind of the point. They're kind of gumdrop shaped. They're a little more oval anyway. So don't fret if they're not perfect circles, that's completely fine. Again, for this one, I'm trying my best to just work around the licorice, but if you must, you can of course overlap and then just put the licorice back on top. That'll just be an extra step at the end, but totally worth it to kind of clean it all up. I don't see anything lewd in there, but I wouldn't be slapping in the face. I honestly thought Jen's disco was pretty clean. Maybe I'm just not looking in the right spots. Yeah, Lumpy, oh yeah, I already canceled a party. Yeah, it's just kind of figuring it all out as usual, just like what's right, what's wrong, what's expected, what's safe, what's too much. It's all really a lot sometimes. Two, actually, oh, that's unfortunate. Tell that movie quote from bonus points. You named the character, said it. You, lewd, crude, rude, bitch. <laughs> dude no googling I don't know <laughs> I can't answer I don't know <laughs> they are perfect circles you'll be banned no everyone who's here isn't banned okay they all passed the test already they don't need to make perfect circles they're all here they all attended they asked for something and they came for it okay <laughs> banned for no perfect circles Okay, that's probably enough purple. <laughs> when I, <laughs> I remember when I first made these, I thought they kind of looked like a virus. <laughs> I don't know, just like a depiction of a virus, something that's very spotted and like <laughs> lumpy and stuff. <laughs> but as we add more, it looks better, I promise. We just gotta make more colors. Fill it up nicely. It just looks like it has purple chicken pox or something right now. All right, so I've got orange, next orange is red and yellow mixed together. If you wanna add a little white in there just to help it if it overlaps the brown, cause it might kinda, you can see kind of come off of the tree, then that's great. And yeah, I guess I should mention that. You don't need to uh, stay within the exact triangle. You can of course kind of pop these so they're kind of coming out. I think that's kind of the point. They're kind of like a lumpy bumpy tree. It's not like the uh, gumdrops are gonna be perfect perfectly aligned and having, you know, nice lined up edges as a result on the uh, sides. Oh, I, just, I still don't know, Cindy. I feel like I'm not good with movie quotes. I feel like I do okay with lyrics and then movie quotes. I'm like, absolutely not. Even if I've seen the movie, I find it hard to place. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Jen might know. Is it? Like the animated one? Oh, there you go. I think I think Jen has it. If it's Hook, I, I haven't seen it. The only Peter Pan I've seen is like the classic animated one. Okay, what's next? I'll do green next. So green is made by mixing yellow and blue. Trying to do a nice kind of like vibrant light green. So you can see how this is really starting to fill up here. I have two more colors to go. So try my best to get all the gaps here.
Can use hook. Yeah. Never seen it, unfortunately. Who's uh who's in hook? Isn't that a Robin Williams movie? Is that right? Or am I totally off? Because I'm just wondering if it is why it wasn't in the Robin Williams list. Where could we slot that in, I guess, is what I'm overall asking. I think I might just start doing more random lists. Like, literally, if you guys mention a movie, I'll try and remember it over the month. And then for the next month movie, I'll just, like, random list, you know? The theme lists were fun, but I think most people just want to watch what they want to watch. <laughs> No worries, Alvin. It's potato time. Have a good sleep if you're off. I'm using red now, everybody, for those following along. Just red, plain red. It is. Yeah, I wonder why I wouldn't have put that, because I feel like I knew that and knew it was popular. And I mean, thinking of myself, I was like, I hadn't seen that before. Anyway, didn't make the list. I don't think. I don't think that would have been one that was uh, not voted in. I think it just straight up wasn't on the list. I'm a fool. That's what I mean. I feel like sometimes I make lists and I miss things anyway, so I should really at this point just embrace the idea of like you guys name a few movies that you've been itching to watch. Maybe I throw in one or two and see where it goes. We can keep like a rolling list if we want. Anyway, I've got thoughts. I saw Discord um, now has like an event function, which is sick. Like, I can schedule an event in the Discord and it, like, kind of has a pinned little notification. It'll be like, one event is coming up. So that'll be cool for movie nights when we get those going again. Aw, oh, thanks, Bray. <laughs> Peter Pan is the name of, um, Bubbles' Pan. I thought that was really cute. She named him Peter. Me too, Todd. I don't want to be spoiled. No Spider-Man spoilers. There's never spoilers ever allowed in this chat, but especially Spider-Man, because I see everywhere people being like, it's so good, but I can't say anything. I just want to know what happens. I want to know the secrets. I want to know if the bait they were pulling on us is true. I don't even want to say the bait. I just, ah. Uh... <laughs> what is No Way Home? Wait, Far From Home, No Way Home? Spider-Man Far From Home. Or is it No Way Home? No, wait. Far From Home was the second one. That's right. Can we do a It'll Make You Cry Night? Sure. What's an, what's an I'll Make You Cry movie? It'll Make You Cry. If that's the vibe, I'll just throw them in there. Really? Oh... Yeah, I'm not even a big Marvel person. I just think the Spider-Man movies are hella fun. And I keep hearing amazing things about the new one, but I'm not going because the movie theaters are shutting down. Well, they're not shutting down. Our province has decided to keep movie theaters open, but they won't serve food. Just shut them down. <laughs> Sorry, but like, what's the point if I can't get popcorn at the movies? Why am I going? Ugh. <laughs> Far, got it, okay, yeah. I was just, my brain, Todd, was melding there. Melting, not melding. Far From Home was when he was on his high school trip. Mm-hmm. Um, many of them, Gray? I don't know. I feel like I do you dirty with a lot of movies during movie night. I'm like, it'll be fine, and then it's not. <laughs> I, the Land Before Time was one. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he, right, he's making some decisions that, I, again, I want to be cooperative and understand. I just don't understand, though. <laughs> I was just about to say, I want to be understanding, and I'm like, I don't understand. <laughs> yeah, the, the movie theater one really gets me. Um, <laughs> in our list of things that were banned, everybody, um, quite literally, there's a line that says, no dancing allowed. Dancing is banned in our province. No one's allowed to dance and have fun. Um, COVID has prevented us from dancing. They put the line in there because, uh, I guess like no, no going to a club and dancing, like no, no crowded, but it, it literally says no dancing except for performers are allowed to dance. <laughs> we're not allowed to dance anymore in Ontario until we're told otherwise. <laughs> I'll pull up the list. It literally says it. 
Just grabbing white and uh, throwing on some little white gumdrops to finish off our gumdrop trees. Oh man. It is cute, Todd. I, uh, I like following on, on Twitter and seeing all the little updates. We stand, but also give them privacy. Yes, very good, very good. It is very cute to think about, though. <clears throat> the Dog's Tale, Land Before Time, Can't Do Dog Movies, uh, Marley and Me is banned. Thank you, I will not watch it with all of you. And if I do, I will just dip out at a very specific part and say, no, no, I'm done. Um, yeah, I can't agree. There's two. There's honestly a few that I feel like I've been like, it's fine. And I'm like, oh, I don't remember this being so emotional. Uh oh. <laughs> Song is a bop. It's all just lo-fi hip hop beats. What are you talking about? It's not even hip hop beats, lo-fi stream music. Are we almost there? Yes, we got the gumdrops. Okay, last step. Oh, okay. Yep, that one was sad. Oh yeah, Cast Away, I feel like was the other one I specifically was like, it'll be fine, and it really wasn't. <laughs> I didn't remember how sad the ending even is. I was like, of course there's the one moment that everyone's like, oh, sad, but the ending's very sad too, honestly. <laughs> Yeah, I could fill her and play music. It, it literally, I'll pull up the list after I'm done this last step. I just think it's outrageously funny that that's what they wrote in the list. <laughs> last step is simply adding some little ripples into our pudding if you want to do that. I thought it just kind of showed uh, the gloopiness and texture of the pudding a little better. So I'm using like a darker brown. You can hardly see it, but it is there. And just kind of doing little like wavy ripples here and there. So kind of like going along the edges. If there's a tree, maybe doing some little curves there. I can hardly see that. I'm going to darken that up a little bit more. Yeah, some little ripples kind of around. So just some curves around any trees as if the, the pudding is kind of bubbling or glooping around. Otherwise, I just do kind of like little curvy motions with my brush. Or even just lines like you would in water, right? Doing little ripples and stuff. And I just kind of use that as a space filler. And I was thinking that hopefully it kind of shows a little more of like, again, the pudding texture. It's not just a brown dirt patch. It's chocolate pudding. Kind of like that. So it's just, again, filling up the area, makes it a little more swirly, a little more active. Okay. And I think that is all. Ugh, that was a longer one. I thought we'd be shorter for that one. That's okay. Oh, excuse me. I can't recall. The song we lost, dancing we lost. Was that the, you played that in the car at one point? Make a horror film featuring a dog as meth as, oh no. No, no, Todd. No, thank you. <laughs> yeah, I can't, I can't say anymore, Grant. It's because I watch these when I'm younger and I don't remember the serious parts. Maybe they, like, fly over my head a little bit more or, like, I just wasn't as, like, invested and then I watch as an adult and I'm like, oh, wait. <laughs> Is there events uh, going on on uh, Wait No Niagara? I, I don't know. Like, I don't think... We're, we're limited to 10 capacity in households right now, so... I don't think there's many parties going on in general. <laughs> thank you, Jen. Round of applause, she says. Uh, thanks, everyone, for joining. For those on YouTube, I'm just going to give you a quick little send-off before I keep chatting with Twitch here. Again, if you're interested in my Twitch uh, streams, you can check me out at twitch.tv slash Paints. That's where you can chat with me a little bit more. We have more, like, <laughs> general conversation and just uh, chatting about painting afterwards and whatnot. So feel free to check me out there if you'd like all free to watch. Um, if you'd like to post any photos of your completed paintings, I'll stick the photos command in the chat there. There we go. Oh no, I gotta do that, don't I? I will, Gray. 
Um, yeah, you have lots of options to post photos. If you want to post photos of what you made, you can go back to the event page on Facebook. I'm just navigating back there now to change the settings so that people can post. There we go. Uh, Instagram, Discord, any of those lovely social medias. You can tag me if you want, that way I can see. Uh, but yeah, either way, I hope you enjoyed. Uh, so coming into the new year, some changes for tutorials. I guess I've like officially decided that I'm reducing the number of free tutorials I'm doing. Uh, I used to do these uh, once a week pretty consistently and uh, just with my current schedule and what I've been trying to achieve uh, online and with art, I haven't been able to keep that up as well. So I think it's a little better that I commit more to once a month tutorials. That way we can plan a little more ahead, look a little more forward to it. And I'm thinking that it'll be like every last Sunday of the month or every first Sunday of the month, something like that. So keep an eye on the other social medias and I'll be sure to kind of explain all of that and really hammer it out for the new year for everybody so that people know when to expect me online, when to expect to see another tutorial. Uh, so I don't have one designed for uh, January yet, but I have some ideas and I'm hoping to uh, create them at the end, start of next month so that I can uh, teach them by the end of next month as well. So yeah, tutorials are still happening, just a little less. Um, I'll continue to post them on YouTube as well so you can keep track there if you like following along on YouTube as well. Uh, otherwise, that's about it. So if you're watching on YouTube or you're done painting on Twitch, thanks very much for coming and I'll see you at the next one. Bye! Thank you.